Hello, and welcome to another edition of Day Drinking with Kevin. I can't tell you how many times people have come into the restaurant and said, Kevin, I can't drink red wines because I'm sensitive to tannins and they give me a headache. So I thought, why not have an episode about tannins in a non-technical way to say, what are they, where do they come from, and how can I avoid them? You know, usually those conversations end with, Kevin, after the second or third bottle, I get these terrible headaches. So I know we have a lot to clear up. First of all, what are tannins? Tannins come from the skins of the grapes, the seeds, the stems, even the oak barrels that the grapes may be aged in. And they are that astringent compound that kind of dries out your mouth when you're drinking red wine. Why do we have tannins? Well, tannins are a natural defense that plants have against some predators. Tannins are not only found in wine, they're found in the skins of apple, in walnuts, and even in the bark of trees. This is an important compound that these plants need to fend off predators. So, I like to think of tannins like the milk skin. Wines like Pinot Noir, Beaujolais, even Zinfandel are like skim milk. Merlot is like 2%. Cabernet Sauvignon is like whole milk. And wines like Petit Syrah, Nebbiolo, and even Tanat are like heavy whipping cream. So if somebody comes into the restaurant and says, I'm sensitive to tannins, I'm going to try them out on something that is on the lower end of the scale. But if they come and say, I'm looking for that big, bold, expressive red wine, then we're going to go for something on the top of the scale. So let's talk about tannins for a minute. Tannins are that compound that kind of dry out your mouth and leave it a little wanting. I like to think of tannins like an octopus where it's binding with the saliva in your mouth and drying it out. And this is one of the reasons that we eat foods that are high in fat and salt when dealing with tannins. For example, a ribeye, a New York strip, a duck breast, and if you don't like meat, Aged cheeses like aged gouda, aged parmesan are perfect to pair with the tannins. This is why when we leave that favorite steakhouse of ours, we have that silky smooth feeling in our mouth. How can I avoid tannins? Well, as I said before, the tannins come mostly from the skins of the grapes. So if you're looking for low tannin wines, obviously white wines are a good way to go. But you don't want to have to drink white wines the rest of your life. So there are lots of low tannin grapes that you can find that usually have very thin skins or have limited contact with the juice that will allow you to drink red wines and not have to worry about tannins. For example, some of my best choices are Pinot Noir, whether that be from Oregon or Burgundy, maybe even Beaujolais, which is also in Burgundy, but it's made out of the grape Gamay. And if you're looking for something really cool, consider wines from the Mount Etna region of Sicily, like Frappato and Nero de Avla. These are also very low tannin wines. And if you want something really cool, consider Zinfandel. Zinfandel, especially old vine Zinfandel, is very low in tannin, provides that big, jammy, stewy feeling that go great with a variety of foods, especially lamb. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on tannins. And if so, put some comments below. And consider subscribing to Day Drinking with Kevin. And if you have ideas for future episodes, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Until next time, this is Kevin McGuire saying, Salute.